Bottom one. I accidentally kicked that dude's bucket. Hopefully he doesn't kick the bucket. So if you saw the last video, then great. Skip ahead to 1 minute 30. If not, check the link in the description or I'll take you through it really quick. Basically, we set out this morning in Beirut with three main goals. Our first goal was to take the new buses of Lebanon donated by France. Our second goal was to go to the park of Beirut, the Hirsch. We decided to kill two birds with one stone and take the bus to the park. Unfortunately, we learned that nothing in this country is that easy. We asked for help, and though the guys that helped us were nice, we ended up on a highway. And though we eventually found the buses, and got to see them with our own eyes, and even made some friends along the way, most of our time was just spent waiting on the side of a highway. After some deliberation, we decided that it would be best to continue on to our third goal and save the bus for another day. That third goal consisted of going to the Beirut port to see the world's largest floating book fair and also to have a look at some of the destruction from the blast that ravaged Beirut in 2020. And so that's where you'll find us now. Two poor souls just trying to make it through Beirut with no transportation except for our own two legs. So join us as we go to the world's largest book fair. Beirut in the winter time is an amazing place to be. It's perfect weather right now. It's like mid 60s, can't complain at all. Come get some. He's a scaredy boy. He's a scaredy boy? Okay, maybe if we leave, he'll do it. Yeah. Let's see. Bon appetit, my friend. We're back on the highway. We're about to cross this bridge over the highway and then walk to the port. Yalla. Are you sure it's this way? Alright, we've arrived in the port of Beirut. Oh, is that it? I thought it was that. I think we're going to have to ask. Oh, wait. It did say it was on the west of the port, which is that way. Yeah. Oh, doggos. Luckily, they're not barking, which is good. Uh, Bonjour. You thought if when el babur ma el katib, el katib el book fair. Walk on the dia katib. Hey. The auto strat. Okay. Merci. You're good. You're good. Just keep walking and don't talk to them. Just don't confront them, and you'll be good. Walk ahead of me. Walk ahead of me. Walk ahead of me. Okay. Just walk ahead of me. You'll be good. You're being chased by dogs. More like followed. You're good. You definitely did not come to the right place. All of this was destroyed by the port explosion. You can see the building there that housed all the stuff. And it's been slowly collapsing now for months. And you can see there's still some smoke, which is wild. Apparently it's been catching on fire for a while, but I would imagine that right here was not a good place to be on August 4th, 2020. I mean, that's insane. Two years have gone by and there's still smoking. So we've been chased by dogs. We ended up in this sketchy ass part of the port. We didn't find the bus, but we are gonna find this book fair. Voila. Back to the autostrade. I don't know if we can keep walking along it though. It's a warm day here. December 29th in Beirut it was a warm day. It might be 70 degrees. Ugh.
Mexican flags. Destruction. Everything destroyed. Destruction. is calling to get a ride. We're definitely not in the right place. No, it's fine. We thought we could walk, but then they said that we had to go via the highway. They didn't let us walk through the port. And now we're here in this random place. I'll send the location. We goofed up. We've turned around. I don't think you can walk to the port like that. So we're gonna come back later with an automobile. Minor setbacks lead to major comebacks. If you wanna go back to the house, like this is the way, right? All right, we're going home. To be continued. We'll get there later. I should have gone the way I said. Well, what's the way you said? Yeah, I got on. So do you want to go there now? Okay, so let's give it a try. All right, we're going to try a different way. Can you see the love in her eyes? I can see like you're in the vlog right now in my sunglasses drinking the water. It's pretty cool. Maybe struggling, but we are not dehydrated. dehydrated. Mia's dehydrated, but a little bit less so now. We have taken 11.5k uh, steps. Mia wanted me to show you guys that just up there is where we almost walked. We were almost among those cars on the way to the boat. That was crazy of you. Yeah, but now we're back in the peaceful city. You did such a good job managing the situation. Yeah. guy just kicked the box out from under the lady. That was kind of wild. All right, I think we're walking up to the port pretty soon. I don't know if Mia still wants a lemonade. They might have lemonade here, Mia. Or, okay, we're not going for lemonade anymore. Now we're just pulling up to we're the port. Finding this book and you're sure that we can walk on this? Yes. Mia's sure we can walk on this. It's over to the left? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm behind you. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm behind you. I'm right behind you. Beautiful Aja, Aja, Beru. And over there, can't really see that well because of the sun, but you can see the big mosque. Beautiful architecture in this city. Okay. Okay, nice there she is. The world's largest floating book fair. Babur. <laughs> Babur. <laughs> like there's no world where I use that word that often. Yeah. But I love how you just tell people like, oh the boat with the books. Boat with books and they back, understand. All the way back there on the port, they were like, ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. They're like, ah, boat with books. Yes, yes. It's like, oh, yes. The only two that are visiting this. <laughs> we are probably two of the only visitors. All right, we are almost here. We're going to go right here and then we are almost at the Babur. What, how did you say? Babur Ketib. Hello, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Lubnan. More water coming up from the sewage. The city still functions in some ways, more than others, maybe. That's okay. 
They do not make it easy to get to this boat, but there she is. The SS book, the SS Kateb. Uh, huge news, we have now made it to our step goal of 14,000 steps in one day. And it's only 2.28 p.m. Are we in Beirut or Miami, am I right? Look at that, Florida license plate. Florida. Ah, there's heads in this book fair. We made it through the security check. They checked their IDs, kind of silly, for this book fair. Just in case anyone's trying to attack this book fair. Oh, this is the World Food Program. The World Food Program, nice. Mia knows all the UN stuff. And now, we are almost at the boat. There's actually heads here. Like, I gotta say, there's a lot of people pulling up to this world's largest book fair. It goes on to Cairo on, uh, I guess, Alexandria on uh, the 3rd of January. Yeah, I wonder where else this thing goes. What do you think? Japan, yeah, it definitely pulls up in Japan. Listen, you can tell me anything you want about Beirut, but like, Geneva doesn't have the world's largest book fair. <laughs> Paris, Paris doesn't have the world's largest floating book fair. <laughs> Moscow doesn't have the world's largest floating book fair. Madrid definitely doesn't have the world's largest floating book fair. Oh my God, look at this line. Wow, already. okay, we have a line to wait oh. in. Keep this line. This is a hot ticket, apparently. Mia just asked if we were gonna weigh in this line, but we did not walk all this way on a highway. Did not wait in this line, I'll tell you that. But thank you for getting us here, Mia. Are you proud? I'm proud of you. Here we are. Look at these boats. And over there, you can see a pile of rubble. Sheer destruction from the explosion two years ago. It's a big ass boat. It costs about 50 cents per person to get on this boat. Not too shabby. Mia has a crush on the UN guys over there. She just wishes it was her. It's almost our turn to board this boat. What are you expecting in there? I mean, this is a big ass boat and this is all just a book fair. You don't know how much of it is a book fair. Most of it's a book fair. I mean, you don't know that. a lot of it's a book fair. Yeah. Some portion of this is likely a book fair. <laughs> Maybe there's just no other floating book fairs and there's only one book. There's only like 10 books. <laughs> And we're about to sit in this uh, like presentation that they're gonna give us. I just want to see the books. I don't. I don't believe that there's any books on this boat at this point. Like, there's nothing indicating to me that they have books. Last time, one dollar with forty-five Lebanese lira. That's scary. What are we gonna get? All right, here we are. We're now in the first room of the uh, of the book fair, and they have a lot of books. Most of this is in Arabic. That's cool. So far. Want to buy a little book in Arabic? Do good, Hedin. The Great Book of Knowledge. The World Atlas. I thought this was good. I think it's doing good for the world, but it's about embracing brand citizenship to fuel both purpose and profit. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's always next year. Al Hawanit, it says. Al Hawanit. Nice. Best. There's no words. I love to read this book, but it's just a picture of the. I will quickly help her staff if you can put the items that you do not want to purchase back on the shelves where you found them. That was the worst book, <laughs> book fair I've ever been to in my life. What's that? Shit, I don't want it. It's Give me a one. So, honest review of the world's largest floating book fair on the Logos Hope. Very, very underwhelming. <laughs> that had nothing on a scholastic book fair from elementary that school. That was like, if you go to just a bookstore, the shittiest bookstore is better than this. To be honest, the concept is great. Like this thing goes around the world. I don't know if it like only goes to 
like lower income countries but the concept that like there's this many people lined up yeah. to like get books lower is awesome. Lower to lower middle income to upper middle income. Is that what it said? Well, Lebanon I think is upper middle income but now it's probably lower middle income. Sorry. Anyways, it's great that there's this <laughs> many people in Lebanon who are here like buying books like the kids are very excited and there were a lot of like informative books in there like there were a lot of like textbooks and like like just stuff about animals and you know that's great for if kids if you want to learn about algebra there's a book in there for you yeah a college accounting there was a textbook uh like there was a book of the animals like this is good this is good and like <laughs> we were in there and this guy was like bibles with animals and I, I looked at the book and I was like, yes, I feel you. It was like a tiny little book and it was just like the animal, the Bible in animal. Like cool. it was like Jesus was a, like a <laughs> horse or something like it, owned, it had elephants at the front. Mm, good. Anyways, really weird selection of books. Probably great for kids. Like they're definitely doing like a good thing in general, but like the books themselves were like not really me and Mia are not their target demographic is what I'll say. Good concept. And what I will say is it was definitely worth 20,000 Lebanese lira. Yes. Would you agree with that? 50 cents? Yeah, that's about 50 cents. But was it worth the two hour walk? Uh, well, the thing about the two hour walk is it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. So, I think so. <laughs> uh, one other thing I wanted to add about the, the, um, the books is that I would rather just buy a book at a store in Lebanon so that I'm contributing to the local economy here. Even though, like I said, I do support the project that they're doing over on that boat. Like, let's pump some money into Lebanon. Thanks for coming along.